Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are back. Show number two. We are covering all eight divisions in this series of shows. We are going to move on now to the NFC West, certainly an intriguing division with intriguing quarterbacks, some definitely some intriguing pass rushers and some superstars who have been added to the mix in the offseason. We got the usual suspects, Germ So True, Vic Jr., Mo Schefter. Let's just get right into it. I'm going to kick us off going with the Los Angeles Rams who are opening a new stadium this uh, this year. It is exciting. They're going to be kicking off the season against America's team on Sunday night football, and they're going to be looking much different than the team they were last year. Uh, some key losses for them. I'm not even joking when I say this. Greg Zerline, the kicker, he's no longer there. Uh, that's that. Listen, Kickers now are more important than ever with that with that move back uh, point after attempt, and and Greg Zerline is probably the, one of the most consistent kickers in the league for the last decade. He's no longer there. Uh, Corey Littleton, the linebacker, he's no longer there. We had we had our issues with him, but one thing for sure is he was somebody that knew that defense. He was a leader in that locker room. So he's certainly going to have his presence is going to be slightly missed as well. And um, they also lost Dante Fowler. And more importantly now, Todd Gurley is no longer there. Um, Whether you want to talk about injuries or whether it was some sort of mental health situation with Todd, we're not sure exactly what has caused his decline in play over the last year and a half. Certainly Jeff Fisher is probably the biggest person to blame for that because they just kept running him into brick walls, snap after snap after snap, his first three seasons in the league. Uh, But that's a big loss for them. They did draft Cam Akers, the running back out of Florida State. And listen, we're not the highest on Cam Akers, um, but if, if he can help them get that offense flowing again, because everything for that offense stems off of play action and everything for play action is dependent on a running game. That's actually threat. That's actually can threaten you. And so if that run game doesn't get going, then Jared Goff's never going to get in a flow. And if Jer- Jared Goff never gets in a flow, his accuracy never, never gets to him. It's either going to be too high, too low, too wide, or a combination of all three. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Those are really their biggest thing is to see if that run game can flow. They did on the defensive side. They added Leonard Floyd and they retained Michael Brockers, who almost signed with Baltimore. Those are those are two big keeps. One one big addition, one big keep, because uh, you need you need to stop the run. The one thing LA has not been able to do is stop the run because Aaron Donald can only do so much. Uh, what I did like about their draft, other than Cam Akers, is they drafted Van Jefferson, the wide receiver out of Florida. And in the in the third round, they got Terrell Lewis and Terrell Burgess, rookies. One's an edge guy, one's a safety. We'll see what they what they do from what they get out of them. I think for LA, they look much different. There is some some optimism now, but they're they're still low in cap space. They still don't have that many draft assets. We, we just don't know what they're going to look like for the next two, three years. I am worried they are going to just now ruin the prime of Aaron Donald's career. And I, I think they're going to have a tough season. I really do. I think they're going to have, they're going to be up and down. I don't think they're going to be consistent. I think they're going to lose some games. They should win. Uh, with that, I, got, I got some questions about that secondary. And like I said, I still have questions as to whether or not they can stop the run. The fellas, they're going to talk about San Francisco and Arizona, and we're going to talk about Seattle. And I think you're going to see that those three teams have improved and those three teams are ready to make a push. I'm sorry, L.A. I'm sorry, Elton. Shout out, Elton. Uh, but, but it seems like the Rams might be on, on a stretch here where they're going to be in the bottom tier of that division. Uh, we're going to pass it along now to Germ. He's going to talk about one of these up-and-coming teams in the Arizona Cardinals. All right, so we got the Arizona Cardinals. Um, I think this is a, one of the more improved teams in football this year. Um, I just look for them to hopefully be able to take that step forward. When we we didn't, they didn't have any losses that were significant. Losing David Johnson after you have add Kenyon Drake, Kenyon Drake is the better player at this stage in, the, in his career. Now, ultimately, Kenyon Drake can do everything that 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 he can do, and 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 he's younger, and he's faster, stronger, right now. So with that being said. Came, comes to the additions of this football team, 
They added the best receiver in football. They added DeAndre Hopkins. It's really not much we need to say for that. Um, you also added uh, Jordan Phillips for the defensive line, which is big against the run. And you also added Drake Kirkpatrick, who I think could come in and be a second guy to, to, to our guy, Captain Pat Pete. And at the end of the day, they still do have one of the best pass rushers in football and Mr. Chandler Jones. Hey, look, he is a technician on the outside. I am, I am looking forward to seeing this guy potentially break a sack record. Um, in the draft, they signed a left tackle potentially that could really do them wonders when they signed a Josh Jones out of Houston. He's one of my favorite players out of the draft. I think he has a lot of good upside. I think he just has to get stronger, which a lot of these tackles do. We say the same thing about Andrew Dillard a couple of years ago that came out of um I forgot, came out of Washington. Washington need to get taller. These guys have quick feet. They have good hands, good technique. They just need to get stronger. Um, they also uh, drafted defensive tackle Lique Futu, who is a very very good running run stopping uh, defensive tackle as well. That should be an interesting guy as well to add to that rotation. But the most important draft pick of all could be Mister. Robotnik, Mr. Autobots, I'm in pursuit. Isaiah Simmons, the cyborg. Listen, that's Megatron for real. I don't know what to say besides if you put a, a helmet on him, you better have a better have a microphone in it. He better be getting all the signals. He can play at both levels. He can play the line linebacker. He can rush the passer with blitzing. He can play back in safety if you need him to play that too. The man can do everything but sell popcorn and pass out tiles in the locker room. It's time that Arizona takes that step. They needed a middle linebacker. They got the quarterback position, potentially figured out with Kyler Murray. Let's see how he progresses from year one to year two. Um, overall, offensively, Kyler is one of the better young quarterbacks in the league. He has one of the better young arms. You wouldn't think an arm would be on a kid that small. That's all I can tell you. Um, running game, King and Drake. He's one of my favorite players. I said that he has tier one abilities. He just got to put it, leave it on the field. Period, point blank. Got some of the best receivers in uh, football. Larry Fitzgerald himself, the legend. DeAndre Hopkins, Mr. Nuke, Mr. I don't drop any passes, and I catch 101 balls a season. That guy. And then Christian Kirk, who's a pretty solid player. Defensively, let's just keep expanding on what we have. Isaiah Simmons in the middle now. Let's continue to get better. Arizona Cardinals this year, nine and seven type of year. I think they take a step forward. And I think they really put a lot of pressure on Seattle and most importantly on the 49ers this offseason. Now to Mr. Junior with the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, so we got the first the 49ers, um, you know, Super Bowl lo losers. Uh, they had their chance there <laughs> to really take that Super Bowl, but you know, they let Pat Mahomes do what he does best uh, at the end of the game there. Um, the 49ers, I thought, uh, probably have one of the best defensive lines I've seen in a long time. Um, DeForest Buckner, DeForest Buckner, probably one of my favorite defensive tackles in the league. They traded him. When I saw that, I was shocked. Traded him over there for a first-round pick to Indianapolis. But then they come back and they get Javon Kinlaw, defensive tackle out of South Carolina. I, man, listen, this kid is something else. When you talk about being able to, 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 to be reckless and at the same time have good technique, have good pass rushing skills, that's Javon Kinlaw. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very, very interesting uh, to see how he develops because my issue, and Jerm just talked about it, is strength. How strong can he be for the beef that is in the NFL level? That's going to be key for that player. Uh, because he's got some Aaron Donald written all over him, except a little bit taller. So uh, Javon Kinlaw, very important piece they took with the Colts' first-round pick. So we're going to see how that turns out between DeForest Buckner going to the Colts and Kinlaw for the 49ers. Their second first-round pick, they, taught, they took wide receiver Brandon Ayuk. Is the only way I know how to pronounce that. Ayuk. Ayuk. Okay, you got uh, from Arizona. Uh, there has been a lot of good reviews about this kid from camp. Um, he was a player that we really liked. Uh, we did not, if I remember correctly, Germ, correct me, if, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if we had a first round pick on that kid. Second uh, round grade. Second round grade. But you're picking 31st, so right. we kind of so, know. Right. So you 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 know you're in that that 
line between picking second round picks uh, and stuff like that. Um, I thought they could have um, went another way uh, in terms of getting T. Higgins and Denzel Mims, but we'll see how that works out. There has been, again, very good reviews about this kid. He is now hurt, uh, so we'll see if he'll be available for week one. Uh, so, But so far right now is, is Debo Samuels, Brandon Ayuk as the two receivers right now uh, for the 49ers, two starters. Uh, a key loss was Emmanuel Sanders, one of Jern's favorite receivers, tw uh, open 24-7. Uh, that's going to be a key loss. Yeah, and, and Joe Staley, who they lost to retirement. Uh, who was their left tackle. Very, very good player. Uh, but they replaced him with Trent Williams. It's going to be interesting to see what Trent Williams does at the left yeah. tackle spot after missing quite a bit of time. Uh, this is a guy that was one of the best at his position. Can he get back to that? That's going to be interesting to see. Um, Raheem Mostar is now the starting running, ba running back. What were we calling him last year? Raheem must start. Now he's got his opportunity to start, so let's see how he goes there. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. I have, <laughs> I have put a lot of effort, a lot of studying, uh, a lot of investing my time on you, my brother. Uh, you get to San Francisco, uh, they pay you a lot of money, and then you go out with a porn star. Um, I don't know what happened there. I don't know why you did such thing. Uh, you showed up. You played well. And then, you know, you can argue that the defense got the 49ers to the Super Bowl. Now, of course, the quarterback was, it was impressive at times, but there was inconsistencies, and he showed that in the Super Bowl. I saw probably one or two really impressive throws in that game. Other than that, he missed a lot of big throws, including that deep ball to Emmanuel, who, I mean, when he got open on that play, it was beautiful. Jimmy missed him. Big play in the game, unfortunately. Um, the defense could have done a better job. <clears throat> defense could have done a better job holding the Chiefs, but then again, they it was four quarters. You got to play four quarters. <laughs> the 49ers lost that game because Jimmy Garoppolo couldn't win that game. Let's not be around the bush about it. Fair, fair enough. Let, let's just say it, bro. What's that, what, what does that say on your shirt? What is that? What is on that big heart of USA film over feelings? They <laughs> lost enough. their game because Jimmy couldn't win, and Patrick Mahomes said, "Give me that." Yes. And, and you know what? The football gods were smiling on that night because Patrick Mahomes should never lose a Super Bowl to Jimmy Garoppolo. It's the same way Tom Brady should lose a Super Bowl to Nick Foles or Eli Manning, but we'll leave that for a different day. <laughs> um, we're gonna move on now to the final team here, and that is being Seattle. And obviously, we're gonna leave Seattle for last because they have the best quarterback in the division, okay? Excuse me? Was, was that? Excuse me? They have the best quarterback in that division. They have the best quarterback in the world. But go ahead, you see. Who this man? Vic, I would like you to know that we are, if you look in the <laughs> bottom corner, we are using Zoom. And as a host, I have the ability to mute <laughs> whoever I want to mute, all right? <laughs> Yeah, so we're, we're gonna let you. We're gonna let you go though. We're gonna let you slide on oh, yeah. that one. We're gonna let you slide. Oh, yeah. on film study, film study coming soon. Film study coming soon. But ain't no amount of film in the world could convince me that Russell Wilson is better than Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady. Anyways, I mean, um, Tom is still the goal. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, Patrick is that. a Billy Gold. So, <laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna move on to the Seahawks now, uh, and they they made some interesting some interesting moves, acquisitions, whatever you want to call them. We'll start with their free agency additions. Wh which one do you find, gentlemen? Ahead, I got the free agency. Yeah, ahead, Jerm. Well, first of all, let's just start with the fact that they signed Quentin Dunbar, mm -hmm. who I think fits in very nice with their yes. culture. Um, also. It, I mean, they signed a lot of good good players here. Like Jaron Reed, they re-signed him. I think that's a very good addition for them. A good for the the, uh, the uh, defensive line. And then they got Mike Potty. They got a uh, Cedric Ugg or whatever his name is from from the Bengals. Bengals. Um, and then they got Carlos Hyde coming coming over as well to help out in the backfield. But none of those hold a candle to Mister Jamal Adams. Mister, here comes the. Here comes the in my Nelly voice, 
it is serious. This is a real live addition. Hey, man, he's probably one of the best. He's the best free strong safety in football right now. Mm-hmm. I can't really, I can't really name anybody else. Um, he has corner hips. He has everything that you want in the, in the strong safety. And last year, he showed you he can rush the passer from the safety <laughs> position. So I mean, he does everything. I mean, he literally did everything for the Jets. Mm-hmm. So this is a great addition for them, considering Pete Carroll doesn't do well with first round. Exactly. Uh, as we get to Vic over here, and Vic, go ahead, bro. With the draft capital. Listen, bro. I mean, here's the problem. As much as I like Russ, I love Russ. I think he's the best quarterback in the world. I'm gonna say it again. This team, it's just again, they're not helping him, fellas. They're not. They're they could be better. And I think he's gotten to the point in his career, just like Thomas the Great Brady did, where he started carrying the team. Russ is now carrying this football team, in my opinion. Okay. Jordan Brooks, first round pick, linebacker out of Texas Tech, with the uh, with the with the with the amount of tackles that were still available, the amount of guards that were still available at that pick, they go for Jordan Brooks, who we feel is no better than the third or fourth round pick, if we check our board, Jerm. That's their first round uh, pick. Like the fifth, sixth linebacker, we even. We even like had on the board, I think, like that, like five or six. He was, right. but he wasn't a because top. It top wasn't a deep, right? It wasn't a deep linebacker class. So we got this kid in the first round. You come back and you get Darrell Taylor, Edge, Tennessee. Not mad at that one. That one makes sense. It's better. Fair than enough. What... <laughs> Fair enough. But I think we had a third round grade on the kid. It's two three. Two three. Okay. Damian Lewis, guard. LSU <laughs> gave up about six sacks last season. A lot of pressures, I think, between him and the, and the, and the center was escaping my, my memory. Justin right Britt? Oh, Cushenberry. Was it? Qu- no. Cushenberry. 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 Between the two, they, they gave up about 30, 35 pressures. And we're talking about Joe Burrow, who was probably the most unbelievable quarterback performance in college history. So... You got this kid in the, in, the, in the third round. The best pick for me is probably the tight end, uh, Stephen Sullivan, who, no disrespect to the Moss family, but he's better than Thaddeus. He just didn't start. So he might, he might have some – there might be a steal there. So they, they got Stephen Sullivan in the seventh round. They also got Kobe Parkinson uh, in the fourth round, uh, tight end out of Stanford. I don't know. What, like, help me. They have hey, so hey, much tight end depth. I got you. They have so much tight end depth. Why does Russ need more tight ends? I don't know all why. Of, I don't know all why. All of them was hurt. All of them were hurt last year. Same with their running backs. Yes, that's why they picked up Carlos Hyde. Listen. Here, here's here. Let's let's wrap it up now with Seattle since we we gave you all the information. Here's my opinion about Seattle. I think with it with their losses. Um, same thing. They got rid of a guys that were just, for the most part, roster hoarders. What you can see with, with Seattle, the one good thing I'll say, I'll start with the positive, is that they have been trying their best effort to rebuild that defense and get the defense in, in the image that Pete Carroll wants it to be. I think they finally have the secondary with Dunbar, Griffin, Quandre Diggs, and obviously Jamal Adams. They still have two of the best linebackers in the world in K.J. Wright and Bobby Wagner. Uh, my question, though, now, my question is this. My question is, A, where is that pass rush going to come from when they need it? So my whole opinion perspective of Seattle will drastically change if they end up re-signing Jadavion Clowney, who needs to fire his agent for turning down six contracts during a pandemic. But that's a different discussion for a different day. Um, and then the other question I have for them is what, what is that offensive line going to look like there? Okay. You could talk about the left side. That'll be decent, but I don't really know what to expect from their center, right guard or right tackle. And so with, with those two big questions, where is the pass rush going to come from and where is the protection going to come from? Those are two major elements, two of the three biggest elements that are, that are missing, that are question marks, at least that I don't know if I can rely on. And I think when you look at what Arizona has done, 
That, ladies and gentlemen, is my NFC team to go from last to first with the superstars that they added in Isaiah Simmons and DeAndre Hopkins. And I am calling Isaiah Simmons a superstar because of the scouting report or the scouting extraordinaire and Vic Jr. I mean, and Germ so true, but Germ also true and extraordinaire in his own right. I think Arizona will win this division with all the additions and with Kyler Murray, who I am starting to buy into slowly, but surely. Um, I think the Rams are in, are, are, are in a bit of a transition. I think the Seahawks are still a few pieces away, and I'm not trusting Jimmy Garoppolo week to week. I'm just not doing it. So give me Arizona to win this division. Jerm? Uh, Seattle wins the division, but Arizona makes it interesting. I think the Frisco is, is going to finish second. I just I still think that that defensive line is gonna is gonna be petri like people are gonna be petrified to have to face that defensive line sure. consistently for throughout the season and they are one of still one of the most gifted teams in football when that and especially in the front seven. Um, I I give me give me give me uh Seattle Frisco um Cardinals and then the uh, Rams okay um the the little the little sheep dogs as we gonna call the Rams are gonna finish last. Go ahead, Vic. I still got to go with the 49ers. Uh, that defense is still very solid. The pass rush, I mean, could it even be better with Javon Kinlaw? So I think that that pass rush is still going to be there. Um, I go 49ers, Seahawks, Cardinals, then the Rams. Um, again, I just I just think Russ has been that guy to that can now take over a game himself. And I saw that several times on film. Um, and we'll, we'll discuss it. We'll discuss it down the line here coming up. Uh, during the season. So you got the 49ers winning the division. Germ has the Seahawks winning the division. I got the Cardinals winning the division. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, to subscribe to us at The Scene, T-H-E-S-C-E-N. We're also on Facebook. Don't forget to join our football group, Views from the 22. And don't forget to look in the comments, look to the right of your YouTube screen, and you will see show number three of our division breakdown. Talk to y'all later.